everyone. Welcome to the session and thanks for joining. And thank you, Deo Security, for having me here. I'm so excited to be a part of this event. Today, I'm going to talk about the tool Velociraptor. The topic for today's session is Unlocking Advanced Digital Forensics with Velociraptor, Artifacts, Investigations, and Extensibility. My name is Shika, Shika Putanvedal. I'm from India, currently located in Toronto, Canada. The list of contents for today's session is a little bit about me, my background, a quick introduction of about the tool Velociraptor, and how we can use this tool for advanced investigations. And also, I would like to introduce a new plugin which I have developed to analyze emails. At the end of the session, I would like to show a quick demo how we can use this plugin to analyze for phishing emails. That's all about for this today's session. A little bit about me. As I mentioned, my name is Shekha. I'm a recent graduate of York University. I have finished my post-graduation in cybersecurity operations. I started my career as a software engineer. I worked several years at Quest Global back in India as a software developer, where I gained experience in various programming languages and technologies. I also had the opportunity to work directly at a customer site in Japan, where I handled long-term on-site assignments. At one point, I got interested in cybersecurity and I really wanted to learn more about this field. So I decided to quit my job and pursue my post-graduation in cybersecurity operations and came here in Canada last year. As a first step, I cleared my certification in cybersecurity conducted by ISC2. And I'm also preparing for other certifications as well. Also, I'm an active volunteer for ISC2 Toronto chapter. I never miss a chance to attend cybersecurity conferences and trainings. Also, I love to connect with people who have immense experience in this field. Uh, that, that is a little bit about me in a nutshell. Moving to the Velociraptor tool. I think most of you are already using it, all, already familiar with this tool. I will give you an overview of this tool. Velociraptor is an open source digital forensic and incident response tool, which can be used to collect, monitor, and analyze endpoints. It supports large-scale deployment, so we can collect forensic artifacts across a large network within minutes. The real beauty of Velociraptor comes with its own query language called VQL. It is similar to the SQL language. If you know the SQL, it is easy to write VQL queries. But don't worry, it is not that much difficult. You can easily learn. Velociraptor also comes with artifacts. It is nothing but a YAML file written using this VQL queries. So if you need to collect data from endpoints, we can just run the artifacts. The end user doesn't need to worry about what is happening inside the VQL queries. The significance of uh, Velociraptor and DFIR is as I mentioned, it can collect almost any aspects of endpoints. For example, file system analysis, content search using ERR rules, binary parsing, evidence of execution, even log parsing, whatnot. Almost any aspects of the endpoints can be collected using Velociraptor. My motivation for using Velociraptor was I got introduced to this tool as part of my post-graduation degree at York University. One of the uh, subjects was uh, DFIR and one of the topics was Velociraptor. To be honest, I find it difficult in the beginning, but gradually I learned and uh, how to run the artifacts, how to write the VQL queries. Uh, my professor, his name is Eduardo Matos. He's a principal DFIR consultant at Google Cloud. He contributed a lot of artifacts to this tool. So that was my initial motivation to learn more about this tool. And I challenged myself to contribute at least one artifact to this tool. So I started thinking of some ideas. But whenever I think of an idea that is already implemented in the tool, I was thinking some browser-related artifacts like a uh, download history, search history, extension, but they are already part of the product. But I could find one missing, that was the browser bookmarks. So I developed an artifact to collect bookmarks from commonly used browsers, and I submitted it to the team, and that is now part of the product. They included it in the latest release. You can check it out. 
I was so happy, but I didn't stop there. I really wanted to uh, think of other ideas as well. And uh, I ended up developing a plugin called Pass PSD, which can be used to analyze Outlook PSD files. So the story behind this plugin development was, as I mentioned, I was thinking of ideas. And that time I got an opportunity to attend a uh, cybersecurity event called the CyberX conference. So there was a session where the presenter, his name is Ali Abbas. He was simulating a real world ransomware attack and how the SOC analyst, team lead, manager, or CISO respond to the incident. And finally, they find out that the attacker got the initial access to their system through a phishing email. So that time I started thinking, how I can use Velociraptor to analyze for phishing emails? Is there any functionality to analyze for email? So when I came back, I just checked the artifacts or any feature related to email analysis, but I couldn't find any. So I discussed this with my professor and he encouraged me to go for it and develop the plugin. And he guided me to use the GoPST library, uh, which is a library used for parsing Outlook PSD files. It is developed by Martin. It's available on GitHub. So Velociraptor is written in Go programming language. I have, Even though I'm a programmer, I never worked with the, uh, Go programming before. And also to develop the uh, plugin, we need to uh, know the source code of the Velociraptor. That time, I didn't even know how to build Velociraptor from the source. So I decided to dedicate my time for this plugin development. And I was able to develop it within two, three days. I was so happy that it worked fine. How the plugin works is we have to mention the path to the PSD file, which we need to analyze. Then it will pass all the email details and you can customize what all fields should be displayed in the output. So we can use the regular expression to extract specific fields, or if you want to analyze the header fields, you can specify that. So it will display all the output in a tabular format. And the benefits of using it is like, uh, we can analyze uh, IOCs from Outlook PSD files easily. Also this plugin has a capability to extract attachment from each email. If you need to save all the attachments to a specific folder, you can specify that so th that we can calculate hashes of the attachments to check for any malicious attachments or also do the Yara searches to find a specific attachment. So that is how it works. I submitted this plugin to the Velociraptor team. They reviewed it, uh, but this is not a part of the product. I think it is um, still under testing stage. I'm trying to improve it better, like uh, getting feedback from DFIR community and I'm trying to improve it. So if you have any feedback or suggestions, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to hear from you. So now I'm going to show you how we can use this uh, plugin to analyze for phishing emails in a sample PST file. Let me share my VM. Let's pray to code. Everything works fine. Sometimes my VM does crazy things. If you are seeing the Velociraptor for the first time, this is how the UI looked like. I'm going to connect my system. This is the set of artifacts. I wrote some artifacts using parse PSD plugin. So this is how the artifacts look like with the or title and some details, some descriptions, and also the parameters we need to specify for. And it came with the source like a VQL queries. This is the parse PSD plugin I have developed. It's like similar to the SQL select things from this plugin and we can specify which all fields we need to display in the output. So now I am going to specify the parameters. So as I mentioned, we need to specify the path to the PSD file here. And if you want to 
save the attachments to a specific folder, you can give the path to the folder. But if you don't want to, just omit this field. So here I am going to give the path. Like I have my uh, sample PSD file saved here. So I am giving this path. And I'm giving an output folder to save all the attachments. Let me clear all these things. And I'm just launching the artifact. It is running. If it is uh, giving you an exclamation mark, it means something error has happened. So if it gives you a tick mark, like it's successfully executed. Let's see. Okay, we got the output. So yeah, it passed all the details from that sample Outlook PSD and displayed over here in a table. I just mentioned center, receiver, subject, delivery time, attachment names, message, and also some header fields like SPF, TK, MD mark, center IP, return path, message ID, and content type. So for this demo, I'm just going with the some header fields. I think all, all of you are familiar with this fields like SPF, center policy framework, uh, which tells us like who is allowed to send emails on behalf of a particular domain. So if it is fail or none, it means the email server is not authorized to send email. So for this demo, I'm just going to filter out the emails with the SPF status fail or none. Let's see. So I got two email, one with a soft fail and none. Both are like SPF or the ring location is failed. So I'm just going with the first email. This is specifying some in center email address and some message like I'm going to give you $10.5 million as a donation. If something is too good to be true, something is wrong, right? So, and also it specifies some different name from the sender email address. Something is wrong there. But we don't have any attachments here, but we got an IP address. So I'm just going to check whether this IP address is malicious or not. I'm using the tool virus total. Let's see. So yeah, one security vendor has flagged this IP address as malicious. So this is how we can search for IOCs from your Outlook PSD file. Now I'm going to check for the other email, which has an attachment. So here also it is showing like account update required, like some immediate action required. And it was non status, SPF non status, and we don't have any IP address specified here. As I mentioned, I tried to save all the attachments in a folder path. Let's see whether we got attachments. Yeah, we got all the attachments extracted from all the emails here. So I'm going to use one more artifact to calculate the hashes of the attachments. I'm using the same plugin. Uh, I'm just using this. Um, artifact just to map it with the attachment hashes and the email content so we can easily analyze. I'm just following the same configuration. Output path in the Outlook PSD file path same. And I'm just launching the artifact. We got the output, like uh, it gives us the hashes of the attachment as well. So this was the email I was talking about with the SPF status none. So we got MD5, SHA1, SHA256 attached hashes here. And I'm going to 
uh, check whether this attachment is malicious or not with the virus dead total two. So yeah, it gives us like 13 security vendors and no sandboxes flagged this file as malicious. So this, uh, we found that this email also has some malicious attachment. So if the user clicks it, boom. So yeah, this is how we can analyze uh, phishing emails using this uh, Velociraptor and Parse PSD. That's it, guys. I just want to show you how we can use this plugin to analyze for phishing emails easily. Hope you enjoyed the session. That's all from my side for today. I just want to thank you some people who helped me to develop the plugin as well as to prepare for this PP presentation and also some pages. If you want to uh, learn more about the Velociraptor, there's a official documentation site. You can check it out. Uh, also, I to create that past PSD sam sorry Outlook PSD sample, I used the some trihagmi pages and some GitHub repository to create a phishing emails in the Outlook PSD file. Uh, that's it. And thank you, thank you for watching, and thank you Day of Security for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, and also please feel feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. That's it. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you.